Okay, we've been getting quite a lot of questions about race render and how it works with Roadhawk. So this video is going to uh, just go through and show you exactly what can be done with this software. Uh, first of all, what's race render? Race render, clever bit of software. What it does is it combines video and data. Normally you would take your camera, take the video from the camera, and you would have a data logger. You take the data file, combine those, and then you can create video overlays of things like your speedo. You can do track times. You can have a map overlay of the track that you've been racing on. A really clever bit of software. Been around for quite a while. We're on version three now. And uh, the best thing about version three is it's compatible with Roadhawk HD cameras. So Roadhawk HD cameras use the same video processor as a lot of other cameras on the market at the moment. GoPro, Contour, Drift. It's an Umbrella chipset and it makes standard MP4 video files as you can see here. So if you're not using the software and you want to just watch the video, uh, just do double clicking on it, you can play it in Windows or Mac. Uh, it's a standard video file for all intents and purposes. Uh, what's different with the Roadhawk HD is, is that it has a built-in G4 sensor and also a GPS module. So hidden within the video, uh, behind the video, is data from those two modules. Uh, and by using special software, you can extract that data uh, and do some pretty clever things with it. First thing you're going to want to do before you go out racing is make sure that the settings on the Roadhawk HD are correct and the way to do that is to load the Roadhawk HD software and change the settings. Uh, so, so just to run through them, resolution, the higher the resolution, the higher the image quality, so we'll have that set to 1080p. This one's quite important, file length. The camera will default to loop mode. It is a dash camera. And when you're using it for this purpose, obviously you don't want it to be looping in one minute files because that makes it quite awkward when you're putting the videos together at the end of the day. So uh, we'll set that to make 30 minute video files and that will turn loop mode off as standard. So every 30 minutes, the camera will make a new video file and those can be linked together. Mic sensitivity, if you've got a very loud car, bring that down to the lower setting. If it's not so loud in your car, you can bring that up high, a little bit of trial and error on that one. A speaker volume, that's basically the internal speaker of the camera. That, so when it speaks warnings, lets you know that the SD card is full. You control the volume of that there. Event sensitivity, we're not going to be using that because the camera is not going to be creating events. Contrast, brightness and saturation, we can experiment with those, but the standard settings are pretty good as they are. Bit rate. That's the video quality the camera produces. The higher the bitrate, the higher the video quality, but also the more data that will be used on the SD card. So you'll get less video on your SD card. But at 12 megabits per second, roughly 1080p, you're going to be using about 6 gigabytes per hour of video. So a 32 gig card, obviously that's going to be plenty for a day's driving. Record mode, that's set to normal. And spot metering, on timestamp that's the uh, timestamp that appears in the bottom right hand corner uh, when we're making these kind of videos obviously we prefer that to be off submit that and then the software will erase all the data on the card and then you're set up and ready to go so that saves a config file onto the SD card, which we can see here. It's a simple text file. And when that text file is read by the camera, when you put the SD card in the camera and turn it on, it reads these settings, and that's how the camera knows how to behave. Now that your Roadhawk camera is all set up, ready to go, download the Race Render software from Race Render website, www.racerender.com. And uh, there's free download for you. The software is compatible with both Windows and Mac and the free download, when it detects that you've imported video from a Roadhawk HD, it will actually give you quite a lot of functionality. There's not a lot that's been left out. Once you've installed Race Render 3, double click to open the software and when this screen pops up, you're going to want to choose Data Logger Simple. That asks you to add the video file, so we click to add the file. This is the file from the Roadhawk camera. So we open this. This is a great thing about the Roadhawk camera is the GPS and the GeForce data is embedded within the video. So you don't need to sync it, it's already synced for you. Now once the file is loaded into the software, click OK. And then on data type, choose the file that you've just loaded. So you've got data and video in these two boxes here. And click OK. And then this will show you the template screen. So you can choose any one of these templates. And uh, we're going to go with 18T. That works pretty well. And we can configure a few things here, but we'll leave it as standard. 
and click OK. And this will bring up the main uh, Race Render 3 software screen. The one thing we're not going to do here is really go into the Race Render software because there's already lots of good videos on YouTube on how to use it. We're just going to very quickly show you how I created the video that we put on YouTube. So uh, these two logos here, these are included as part of the free version of Race Render. If you want to get rid of that, then you'll just have to pay to remove those and that will give you the full upgraded version of Race Render 3. Here we can see the map. You can see this is automatically being picked up by the camera uh, and the software has drawn it as exactly as we drove around the course. So it's not it's not imported that from anywhere else. There's no map database. It's literally drawn that from GPS. Here we've got the speedo. So we'll move this. The video we created, we left the time and date stamp on with the Rodoc software. I showed you how to remove that earlier. So we're going to use that to cover that. And um, this is your GeForce meter here. And we have your lap time here. If we double click on the lap time, we can bring up the display properties. Obviously, it's a little bit dark there, so what we'll do is we'll change that to red. We'll change the time to red as well. And we'll move the map here for now. So we can play the video here to preview it. And we'll see what we've got here is a little bit of uh, time in the pit. So what we'll do is just move this forward until we actually start racing. You see, as I drag this bar around, you can see up here the position of the vehicle on the map. So we'll start it here and we click this green flag that starts the entry point of the video. And we'll make a video that's just a couple of laps long. So we'll take it to about here. You see every time the red dot passes the start line it creates a new lap and new time here okay that's the end of the video so we'll click that to mark that's that's the section of video we're going to make and then to produce that click on create video we click yes and it's going to ask us what we want to call it so we'll call this race test And here it gives you some options on um, the type of video you want to create. Now I always use MPEG4 H.264. That goes on to YouTube quite nicely. Everything else pretty much leave as standard. Video bit rate. The higher the bit rate, the better the video quality. 20,000. You're not going to need to go any higher than that. Create video. Then click save. And your video is created. So there you go, that's how easy it is to import video from Roadhawk HD into Race Render 3. Uh, the video we've created is a standard MP4 video file, and that's ready to go on YouTube. Just upload it, and away you go. Obviously, there's a lot more that you can do with Race Render 3. You can do picture in picture, you can change the display, change how all the clocks look. Uh, it's a really powerful bit of software. There's loads more good video guides on YouTube, and I'll link to those in the description of this video. Uh, so uh, there you have it. Have fun and uh, don't forget to let us know when you've uploaded your videos to YouTube.